Hello YouTube. Today we're going to talk about functions. So these are functions such as cos, cos, cosh, log, and so on. We're going to consider domain and range. We're going to consider onto and one-to-one -one functions. The definition of a function and whether or not they have an inverse. So if you're interested in these topics, then stay tuned. Okay. So let's begin. Now our first question for our session is about the log and the cosh functions. Okay, now there's a way to build a function in Mathematica, but but log and cosh are all already built-in functions. So I'm just going to write log of x. Okay, and let's just plot log of x. Now naturally this is log to base e, as in the base of the Napier logarithm. Okay, so let's plot this. As x goes from say minus 5 to 5 and see what we get. Okay, so as you can see, it's only defined for positive numbers. So on the right of the y-axis, we see this blue curve. This is the plot of the log function. Now let's do the same for cosh. Okay, so we've got cosh, and it looks like this. Okay, sure. Now, what this question asks us to do is to plot the composition of the functions, right? So, so then I can simply do, now log is f, so if I just copy this and put it where x is, paste, well, this is f of g, all right? So I'll get rid of this, and then I'll put in comment form what I am doing. I'm calculating, sorry, or I'm plotting f of g of x. So let's have a look. Shift enter. Okay, and it looks exactly like this within that range. Okay, now let's do this the other way around. So the next one will be g of f of x. Okay, and so g is just cosh, and then where I have x, I replace this with f of x, but f of x is just log of x. Shift enter and see what we get. So that is this one down here. Okay, so that's that one done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Consider the function. Now functions are a, a rule for sending a set A to a set B are elements of a set A to elements of a set B. Okay, so let's write that. A function is a map or rule for sending elements of a set A to elements of a set B. And it is often written exactly like what we see here. So, for example, F maps A, and then we would put an arrow to B. All right, and then we would define exactly uh, what the rule for that would be. Now, we need this to be well defined, and that means uh, for every input x, 
it has to be defined and go to exactly one element in B. Okay, so well defined. All right, so we're considering this function that maps real numbers to real numbers, and its exact description is given by this. All right, so this is a cubic polynomial. Fairly simple. Why don't we plot this while we're at it? Okay, so I will plot x cubed plus 3x. I leave a space for the multiplication, but I don't have to. I can put an asterisk, and then I'll choose a plot range. Let's go minus 6 to 6, shift enter, and see what we have. Okay, so this is a function, right? Notice that for every x, it's going to exactly one y. But this function is also one to one. Now that means that every horizontal line that passes through this curve intersects in only one place, right? Unlike quadratic equations, uh, that have two intersections when you pass through a horizontal line in, in many uh, places. Okay, so that is a rough definition of uh, one to one. All right, now next, this says find f inverse. Find the inverse of f and then plot the inverse of f together with f on the domain from minus three to three. Okay, so we've already plotted f from minus six to six, so why don't we just change the plot range to minus three to three. We've got some of this done. So the inverse of f exists if and only if f is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, now, how do we decide whether or not a function is one-to-one? -one? Well, if it passes the horizontal line test, then it's one to one, but there is a theoretical way of deciding this. Okay, so to do that, we say, assume that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. Okay, now in Mathematica, there's a button for these subscripts. So let me find it. All right, so I'll go up here to Palettes, Basic Math Assistant. And then it's just right here. And I am going to, rather than do this with the X1, get rid of that. And I'll use this button right here. And then I'll fill it in. X with a subscript of 1. Now I can just copy this. Paste change that subscript of 1 to a 2, and I can close the palette again. Okay, so we assume that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. Now what does that mean in terms of this uh, function? Right, so then that will mean that x1 cubed plus 3x1 minus 5 is equal to x2 cubed plus 3x2 minus 5. Okay, so I would have that. Now, I'm just using this um, to write down and think. I'm not going to press shift enter. So next, what we would do is we would add 5 to both sides, all right? So I'll copy this, copy, go underneath, paste, and now I'll get rid of the minus 5. Okay, now what? Well, you would want to take the this side of the equation to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. Okay, now this would be minus x2 cubed minus 3x2 and then that would be equal to zero. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, we can put this in a comment. Okay, and now I can copy this, go underneath, 
and write factor. Okay, so we factor this and see what we get. Right, so that will be under here. Now look at it, we have a factorization. So let's copy that, go back here, paste. Right, so that says this is equal to zero. Okay, now if you look at this, this never has any real solutions. Okay, so let's write that. So in comment form, since the equation this equals zero has no real solutions we must have the other possibility which is x1 minus x2 is 0 okay and notice what that says that says that x1 is equal to x2 so x1 equals x2 okay so what we've demonstrated there is that um, this function this function right here is one to one okay we conclude that f is one to one and hence its inverse exists so f inverse exists okay and since its inverse exists we can seek to find it okay so the next thing we want to do is find it so we'll do this part of the question find f inverse all right so let's comment this out as well and then we can write some mathematical code here now what we would want to do is put y equals x cubed plus 3x minus 5 and we want to solve this for x right but we're only interested in the real solution okay so I'll put equals equals and then I'll ask Mathematica to solve this for x we're going to get three solutions right but only one of them will be real let's have a look okay so having checked this earlier this is the real solution so I'll copy this I'll put it back now what you do is when you define uh, an inverse function and you solve for x you end up with the y and now you change the name of y to x so I go through here and change the name of y to x and then I'll say that uh, well this is this is f inverse okay so I'll do that above in a comment f inverse is the function below okay now the last part of this question asks us to plot this together with f in the domain from minus 3 to 3 so we'll copy and we'll go up here and we'll put this in a, a set bracket all right and I'll paste this in here and we'll plot those two together all right let's see what we have that doesn't look like what I expected right so when you plot the two of those together you don't uh, quite see what you expected because notice uh, the range of f is quite large compared to minus 3 to 3 okay so if we want to properly see the inverse function uh, 
having some curves in it, well, then you need to plot it from uh, minus 30, say, to 30, a bigger range, all right? So shift enter, and there we see uh, what looks like the inverse function, okay? So if you turn your head on the side, right, then you will see what looks like the cubic f of x, and that's what you expect. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks, and that's all for now. See you next time.